Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio and welcome to week three of Junk, Use It or Lose It. Now, before I get into this week's project, I just want to say hello and a big welcome uh, to all. A big thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, thanks for joining me here. I'm delighted that, that, that you've uh, subscribed to my channel. And of course, a big thank you to those that have those of you that have actually been with me for quite some time now. I'm really delighted how popular uh, this series seems to be and so many of you have said that you've made or you're actually going to make the journals from weeks one and two. And three of you that I know of have actually already made videos. There's Nina Rybina, Maggie Lockley and Betsy Doodle and I'll leave links below to their videos and if I've missed anyone then really sorry but please let me know uh, you know where I can find your video and I'll take a look at it. Now at the end of today's video I'm going to give you a sneak peek into what I've been doing in my week two accordion journal. I'm really pleased that I've been using this so I'll let you see what I've been doing so far. But meantime uh, today's project is going to be using the humble cardboard tube. Now ideally uh, you need around five of these and ideally they should be around the same size but not all cardboard tubes are the same. This one for example is much smaller and will go directly in there. So if you can get five the same size great. If not you can use them of different sizes. Uh, you just need to be careful when it comes to the actual binding of them. So you could get away with two, you could use three, you could use five, you could use more than that. Uh, f five for me seems to be about that kind of optimum number m maybe to start with. So aside from the cardboard tubes, the other thing I want to say is obviously these are actual toilet roll tubes. Now if you have any issues with using toilet roll tubes then what I would suggest you do is to just take a disinfectant wipe and wipe around them and that, that should allay any fears you have. Otherwise take the cardboard tubes from kitchen towels and cut them in half because obviously they're much longer so they could be cut in half. So, so that, 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 that's all I do and I'm quite happy using these. Other items we'll need today, uh, a ruler, a bone folder, although you could always use the back of a pair of scissors if you don't have a bone folder, some glue and initially I'm, I'm just using uh, the stick glue, scissors, some raffia, ribbon or whatever for a closure and if you're going to decorate at this stage then some paints and something to cover the tubes with. Now what I've done is I've pulled out some of my jelly print pages. These are another thing, while I wouldn't consider them junk I do actually sit them in the junk box and sometimes I do pull on them for mixed media pages etc but I've, I've got quite a quite a lot of them now and I thought I need to start using these as well you know so whilst they're not junk technically they're sitting there and either need to be put into a journal or need to be used for something so I'm quite happy to be using them for this. I'm doing a second version of this uh, cardboard roll journal. So I'll do one journal which has an easy closure, but I'll do a second one which is slightly more detailed uh, and just takes a little bit more time. And if you're going to do that one as well, then you'll also need some sort of cardboard box for the cover, or you could use another two cardboard tubes, that, that, that would work as well. And I'm going to use a slightly uh, tackier glue to finish this one off. I may use this or I do have Aileen's tacky glue, I might actually dig that out and use that as well. It's just something that will need a bit more stickiness, tackiness to actually hold everything together. So let's get started. What I'll be giving you by way of measurements are the measurements for the tubes that I'm using. Now, as I showed you earlier, not all tubes are the same size. You know that anyway. Uh, but obviously, if you're making this, then you will have to adjust measurements 
to fit your particular tubes. So all I, all I start by doing very simply is folding the tube out and getting a nice crease. So I'll do that with five. Now the tubes that I'm using are 11 centimetres, that's about four and three eighths of an inch by eight centimetres, which is about three and one eighth of an inch. I'm doing that, then the next thing that I'll do, and I, I won't show you doing this uh, because it's straightforward, is to take some paint and to paint around these four edges on this side and on this side. So you could just paint the whole thing. If you didn't have any paper to cover it with, you could simply paint the whole thing. But the way I've done it is to just paint around these edges. If you want the inside done, you could also put a little bit of paint in there just so that when it's open at this end and you're looking in, you don't see the cardboard. I don't particularly mind that, but you know, you, you, you will have your own preferences as far as that's concerned. So flatten these. If you do it in advance, you could put it under a heavy book or just pull them together with some elastic bands as I've done here and that actually helps flatten them out as well. So once the painting's done I then cut my papers to something like four and a quarter inches by three inches. Now you could have an edge if you wanted or you could put the papers right up to the edge. You could even fold it all the way around. I just decided I didn't want to, to do the fold right round but you know really what, what, whatever way again is your particular preference then that's the thing to do. So that's it painted and the jelly print stuck down. Now a great tip I picked up from Nina Rybina is to use the inside wrapping of uh, from cereal boxes so the wrappings that the cereal is actually in so this is grease proof and it's a good way to smooth out the glue make sure that the two pieces are firmly together and it just saves tearing the paper because sometimes especially these papers I, I was finding anyway that uh, because it's just printer paper it was easy to tear so this isn't quite dry yet but you see where I'm going with it. So I'm going to measure in about a half inch. Again it will depend on the size that you're using and I'm just going to draw this on heavily so you can see it. So a half inch I would score down there. As I say I'm just doing this heavy so you can actually see it and then I want to do a half inch from, from either side. So that would be there and roughly there. And all I'm going to do is punch those two holes. Now another optional step at this stage would be to actually ink the edges if, if you wanted to ink them. So basically you'll then have however many of these and what you want to do is then to put the five or however many together and basically just put your uh, jute or twine or ribbon through these and, and here's one in good fashion I made earlier. And here it is. So you'll see same binding as week one journal. This just slips through all of them and then it's a case of just tying it. And again this type of journal it means that if you collected more tubes and wanted more added together you can simply do that. And there's another way just to neaten that which is just to tie those together. And again, you could hang beads or whatever off of these if you wanted to. This will then open quite easily. If you wanted a tighter binding where you couldn't fully open it, then you just make these tighter. But these open quite nicely. Let's take this out a bit. Like so. This one was slightly shorter than the rest. 
because it had a very rough edge on it so I shortened it but I just put that one in the middle and I don't think it makes any difference at all. And there we go. Now obviously if you had a fancy paper stack you could use that. I'm still at this stage just looking to use as far as possible my junk. I've made some tags, very straightforward design, uh, simply using some card. I've also covered them with some jelly prints. It was really the leftovers from when I'd sliced up the jelly prints. There were some small pieces and I just pieced those in, took some circles from cardboard and added those to the top. So I think I'll probably be doing one of these videos in the series just on tags and tabs and that type of thing. So I'll come back and do those in a bit more detail. But those fit in there quite nicely. And obviously with these you can make them tight enough that they fit right up to the edges. I've just given a little bit of room just so that they can go in and out fairly easily. And this one I just put a matching top on that. I didn't angle that. And these could be used for journal spots, you could stick photographs to them, or whatever. I think they're quite nice. So that's it, that's a very straightforward, easy method. I will now show you a slightly more, I hesitate to say difficult because I don't think it's difficult, it's just a little bit more time consuming. But I'll show you one and basically again around five of these, take it to the same stage, painting the edges if you want, sticking down papers of whatever description, putting some ink around, but get to the point of having them complete but don't put holes in them because that's where this one will differ. So back in a second when I have mine ready. So here are my five that I've done more or less the same as before. I've, I've not actually gone round these yet with distress ink or anything but uh, I may leave these ones just now. So exactly the same process as the first journal except I've not punched the holes in. These won't have holes. But what I want to do now is to make covers. Now you could simply take two of these cardboard tubes, you know, so you could have two like that and have three in the middle, or you could add another two on, or you can take separate cardboard. I'm, I'm taking separate cardboard. What will happen is if you use these tubes, these, these will become totally sealed just to make it stronger. Uh, Though again, it's, it, it's, it's not absolutely essential, but I'll show you how I'm doing it by using cardboard. So again, just based on the measurements of the tubes that I'm using, I need four pieces of card, which are four and a half inches by three and an eighth. So I've already cut these out. So just from one of my cardboard boxes. So four cards at four and a half by three and an eighth and basically you can see that this will give me just a little bit of overhang on this edge. They're more or less the same size that way so it's just a tiny bit here so that the closure that I put on will actually come out a bit and if there was any tags. If you, if you were having tags with big fancy kind of embellishments at, at the end then you might want to make this a bit, a bit longer but this is uh, this suits my purpose and what you then want to do is to paint the four of these like so and what will happen is these will be stuck together at some point so you have the outside and the inside now I've just given these a quick coat just now they probably would need another coat but that will act as the outside pages. Now the other thing that's needed is to make, we're going to put hinges on these so it'd be more like a kind of hinge type binding. So again for my size of journal I'm using a piece of card, just the same card that I've used for these. You probably need something, if you've got a heavy card stock that would do, probably heavy 
uh, papers from a paper pack would do. The deli papers, if printed on normal printed paper, would be too thin. But uh, yeah, just something that's hard enough to give it a, a, a good cover on it. So with this, you're going to need, if you're using five cardboard tubes, you're going to need six hinges. And I'm going to make each of these an inch wide. So I'll mark the inches first of all. So my piece of card's a little bit short. I need another inch, but that's because I'd already taken a piece off for something else. So, but just know that you need six of these. So I'm just going to do three to begin with, but you want six. So I'm going to mark my main lines first. And then what I want to do is to, sorry, the other thing I should say, I should have said this before now, you want it of a size that will actually fit into here. So whatever size that is, you want it so that it will fit comfortably in. Now you can make it a bit smaller, but you have to position it in the middle or you could put it quite tight up, but just so long as you can get it in easily. So for each of those inch pieces, I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure three eighths from the start. So one, two, three eighths, and then five eighths, four, One, two, three, four, five, and again at the bottom. See, I got that wrong already. I may have said this before, but that old adage about measure twice, cut once is good. The only thing is I need to measure about 10 times before I actually do any cutting. Now these measurements of the inch, the 3 eighths and the 5 eighths measurements should do any. If you wanted a bigger space in between your individual tubes, in between the leaves, if you were going to put a lot of embellishments on them, then you could make this middle space wider. That would obviously increase your one inch here. But again, for my purposes, this seems to work well. So, I would have six of these marked in this way. If you had a scoring board you could now score along these. I don't have one so what I'm going to do is to fold them just over a ruler. I found this the easiest way. So all I'm doing is placing that on the back of the ruler and bending and again there. And that's quite straightforward. So what you have is a hinge that looks like this, except you may have painted them. What I then did was to take a bone folder just to make sure that I've got these nice and creased and just went over that. I've got six that I had already painted and I've painted them to match the colour of the cover.
Now the only thing that I found was that because they were painted, this one I dried with the heat gun and when I went to fold it, you can see that it actually almost snapped. So I think best to, to let them dry naturally or to leave them, I don't know, a little while. That one seems a bit more pliable. That one was immediately after heating it and uh, yeah. But you know, these things happen. Just a case of then making some more. So the way this then works is that we will have our covers. We have our five of these and these will slot in like so. So you would have your first one that hinges the first two together. Then you would hinge number two and number three together. And so on until you have them all done. And the idea then is that you would also hinge your first one to your covers. But I'll take you through that in a bit more detail. So let's get started with gluing these together. And the way I'm going to start is oops, to take the first one and I'm going to have the put this hinge in first so it's got this edge that will hang over until I'm ready to put the cover on. So as I said with this I think I need slightly heavier glue so I'm going to use Aileen's tacky for this one. So in my haste to do that first one I actually managed to get it wrong. I don't know my mind was somewhere else at the same time I think. So I'm, I'm, I'm now down to four and I'm just going to do it with the four rather than trying to make another one just now. So I'm going to start this again. I'm going to work from back to front, front to back, it doesn't matter. So here, here we go again. So I will need to use one of these little pieces that I just made, but that's, that's fine, I can pa paint that later. So, starting here, I'm just going to do this one side. What I ended up doing with that last one is I pushed in what should have been the back piece of the spine. I didn't think I'd pushed everything in correctly, so I ended up pushing this piece in as well, so not good. So, glued that first section sliding it in and I'm putting it on this side and I'm making sure I've got that bit there sticking up. Next one I'm doing this side and this inside And so I'm putting it in like this so that the inside will stick to the outside of the tube and this piece will stick to this piece. So this goes in like so. There we go. And I want to push the two together. And what I want to make certain of is that I have this centerpiece to the outside. What I did before was I thought, oh, I've not pushed those in correctly and I pushed those further into that next crease. But I want to have that crease there. Okay, and I'll just push these together as much as possible. Now, as I say, if you had a clip, you could clip here and it would just keep it that bit tighter. I'm just going to go along and do the next one, though. So the next one I want to, and if you're in any doubt, just put it up against the next one, just fit it on and you'll see that what you need to do is to glue the inside edge of this one. So let's do that. Whoops, it is easy. 
and so this one fits in like so and then we take the next one and again if you just look how it would fit in we can see that we need to do this outside edge and this inside edge so again we'll just do that So I'm just trying to do this quickly and not taking maybe quite as much care as I should. But hopefully you get the gist of it. And again, just pressing them down to make sure that each piece is being adhered fully. Okay, so I'll just carry on and attach the next two. So we now have our four, which should have been five, but I made a mistake, never mind. We have our four all attached using the hinges and we have a, a loose hinge at either end and these will be used for the covers. So, Step one is to obviously get your covers and take one and what we're going to do this time is attach it to, let me think, the inside of this piece. Okay, so back hinge, front hinge, doesn't matter where you start, so take this piece here glue it up to the, the fold point and then attach this paint side to the inside onto here. Okay, so I'll just give that a moment to dry and then I'll do the exact same with this front one. I'll put it on here with what will be the inside of the page. Okay, so I've now got that piece glued on. So what I'm going to do now is to find a piece of scrap material, ribbon or whatever that I would want to use for a closure. Okay, so I have a piece of ribbon left over from another project. I've measured it, it's 10 inches, that's going to do perfectly. So all I'm going to do is cut it in half. Then what I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to take Whatever I decide is going to be the front of my journal, doesn't really matter, but let's just take this side and I'm taking the inside of the front cover. I'm going to glue this and simply stick my piece of ribbon in place so that I've got a two or three inches of a hang over there. And then I'm going to take the other side of the cover, glue it, and then pop it into place. Now, I'm sorry, I'm having one of these sort of clumsy days. Do you ever get those? Where I'm knocking things over, and oh, I just don't know. All thumbs today, I think. Which is probably why I cut myself yesterday. Clearly like all thumbs yesterday as well. So that is basically it. You'll see that was a piece of cardboard that I hadn't painted on the inside, but that's okay. I can cover that up with a bit of paint, but you'll see how this now opens. Now it does need a bit more drying time. It's, it's not fully dry yet, and I do need to put something onto this just to, to kind of 
make sure that each and every page is, is going to be properly glued down. I'm liking the way that it's going. I'm not entirely satisfied with it. I'll be perfectly honest about that. And the reason being that, okay, these, these aren't fully adhered yet, but I'm, I'm feeling they're just a bit too rough, even, even for my liking. So there's two things I'm going to do. I'm going to cover these front covers. I will probably simply get my jelly prints again. So something like this or some pattern papers I'll see and then what I'm going to do is put this down and actually cover the whole piece to give it a neater finish and, and maybe try and fold in these edges. They're not too bad but yeah I, I would just like to neaten them a bit. So I'm going to do that back in front and then I'm also going to put something round so that this piece here is tidier so that that's actually too the inside of a cover rather than to, to uh, the outside. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I'm back. So just as I kind of tidied things up there, I gave this a little bit more drying time. It still does need some time, uh, but there we go. So I've ended up covering the front and the back covers with some jelly printed paper. And for me, that's made it a lot neater than it was. Okay, I've got this join here, but I'll cover that up with more decoration once I start to kind of use this. The other thing I decided to do was to put this kind of outer cover on it. So all I did was, I was going to use a jelly print to begin with, but I realised that wasn't heavier enough. So I have delved into my cardstock, which I'm quite happy to do because I don't use a lot of that particular pack. So it, it's actually good to use some of that. So I just cut that so that I'd have an inch on either side here. And then I think this was about an inch and a quarter, which was just the kind of depth there of the book. Uh, I will probably do a bit more to, to decorate this, but I hope this shows you the kind of basic steps in, in getting to this stage. And you'll see that this now opens quite well. Don't glue this piece in here, because if you were to glue that, that would be static. And yes, it would still probably open, but I think it would put more strain on this bit here. So if, if you look at books that are kind of bound this way, 
you'll see that they similarly have that, that gap in there. So yeah, I'm much happier with it than I was. Uh, will I use it? Well, I'm certainly going to try. I'm going to give it a bit more drying time and then I'm going to start to decorate it in some way. And, and my intention is that once I've done all these projects, I, I will come back and do a video on how I'm actually using everything or not, as the case may be. So yeah, I, I, I think these would make nice little gifts and I could imagine that you know, if, if I'd been at a special event, say a birthday party or something, and had taken some photographs and that type of thing, then I can imagine actually putting these in place here, you know, and, and, and maybe using some, as I've got in this, some uh, tags, you know, you could put a photograph on that and slip it in there, or a bit of journaling, or, you know, something from the event or whatever. So, yeah, I think they'd make quite nice gifts for people. So that, that that's the two of them. Uh, undoubtedly this one was much easier to make, very straightforward, and other than the gluing and the sticking of paper, uh, was really, sorry, the painting and the sticking of paper, it was really, really quick to make. This one, a little bit longer. I'm convinced that there's a better way to do this hinge. I think if you had a scoreboard and you were able to, to, to score all the lines, you could leave that sheet, rather than cutting it off in one inch pieces, you could actually leave that as one long piece, fold in the, 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 the kind of bits that go inside each of the tubes, glue them together, and so you would have one continuous piece going through them all. So I'm going to try something like that in future, but meantime, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy now with the way that this has turned out. So lessons learned. Okay, I, I must have around, I don't know, I'd, I'd hazard a guess and say a hundred of these tubes in various bags, maybe even more. I don't need to keep that many. I think if I had maybe 10, that would allow me to maybe make another couple of these just to try and improve on the model. So version 1.2 might come along at some point or try that. The other thing that I've learned is about how I actually store them. Now I've been taking these tubes and just putting them into a, a plastic carrier bag and that's filled up. That's, that's five together. So my intention now is that I'm going to go through what I've got. I'm going to keep back, well I've got five here, I'll keep maybe another ten maximum but I'm going to fold them and I'm going to store them like this because they will take up so much less room uh, than, than, than having them open and at this point I'm not sure that there's anything else that I would need them for so a bit of getting rid of at this stage and a bit of organising them better. So that's it, I hope you've you enjoyed these two little journals and I hope that uh, you'll have a go at making them as well. But now I'm going to give you a little kind of sneak peek into how I've been using my oh, my accordion journal. So here we go. I decided to leave this closure on and you'll see why in a minute. I was desperate to start using this one because I was really keen on it. I will put something on here just to neaten this up, maybe a charm or something. But basically this will be left as is because I've painted this first page. I'll take this out just slightly. This was, this was actually the second page that I did. I started on, on the next one and after I did that, I, I, I don't know, I just felt that there was something about I wanted this page done that would then lead into the next one. So all I did was to paint over the piece of masking tape that, that was there. So this will now remain. There's, there's still scope to change it if I wanted to. So that's that one. I just used some uh, Tim Holtz paper that I had left over from another project and cut out these butterflies. Did a bit of embossing here. Now that I have a proper heat gun rather than using my hair dryer, I can actually do some emboss em 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 embossing. Blech. So that was that page. Then we moved to this page. 
So this was actually the first page that I did, but as I say, I decided then to kind of, I suppose it would do a prequel to it, so that's what we have. And you'll see that they kind of move into each other. I don't know how far out I can take that. So in a sense, this is almost telling, I don't know, maybe telling a story. And I've done one more page, and that's this one. Bring it in again. You see the butterfly again. This goes over to the next page, which I've not yet done, but I'm intending that that will kind of carry on. Uh, just some stamping here. You can see it very faintly there. I've tried to change as it goes through. Used a lot of chevrons and, and arrows, almost kind of pointing towards the next page, maybe that kind of journey. So, yeah. Hopefully you can see how it all kind of goes from one to the next. So that's it. So three pages done in that, so I'm pleased with that. More planned. Uh, I had hoped to do one yesterday, but I, I didn't get around to doing that for a number of reasons. Lots of things on the go just now. And I probably won't show you this again until, as I say, I'm going to do a roundup video to show you where I've got to with all my projects. So, hope you've got something out of today. If the video isn't too long, I'll leave in the blooper. If it's too long, I refer to it anyway, so I think you'll get the gist of, of what it is that I've done. But uh, all in all, yeah, the second one, a bit more difficult, a bit more finicky to make, but I think that can be improved upon and I am going to give that a go at some point. But I hope you've got something from it. Uh, if you liked it, please give me the thumbs up. And uh, if you're new to the channel, then I'd love for you to subscribe. Please check out the others who are already doing these projects. I'd love for you to, to see theirs if you haven't already. I know that a number of you have actually come to me from, from uh, their channels. So, you know, you've maybe seen them already. So, yeah, thanks very much. Bye for now.